All right, welcome back. Now, we've got some extra control cap. We're about two turns out from last episode. Nothing happened. I just flew my ship back to base. And we are obviously on the edge of provoking some alien retribution. But I think I can't exactly live in the shadow forever. I could wait for Hydra interrogation to finish and then for us to do another tech afterwards to help lower our threat level. But I think at this point I'm going to take it on the chin and actually accept a retaliation. What I'm going to do is do a round of increasing unrest in the United Kingdom. Uh, not stabilize, I want to increase unrest. So something like I'll do a couple of increased unrest actions in the UK drive this up from peaceful to uh, a reasonable level of unrest, and then Max should be able to overthrow the government. The UK isn't quite big enough to be coup resistant. Something like the European Union uh, absolutely is, although with enough work, the European Union might eventually be vulnerable to a coup. Because it's not really super Europe. It's like mini, mini super Europe. It's, it's, it's Franco-Iberia plus the Balkans or a significant part of the Balkans and some Central European states, but it doesn't have Germany or the Benelux or Denmark, etc. So maybe in the long term, there might be a potential to, especially if we bribe Exodus afterwards, to throw Exodus out of the European Union and merge the Eurasian and European unions. There are some texts that allow that to happen. So we can hypothetically, yeah, we could hypothetically create a Eurasian Union uh, out of the European Union and Russia um, and its various other constituent states and allies. Because they're allies. They're, this is not countries that are enslaved under Russia. I would, I would never do that. Um, plus, it would be the blue colour if we unified with the European Union rather than the other way around. There's two ways to do that. Either we could research the texts that give Europe a claim on uh, St. Petersburg and Moscow, or we could give... Uh, the texts that give the Eurasian Union claims on the various European capitals. Either option works. Something to consider. Um, so I'm going to run up the hate there, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm still looking for a resistance counsellor. As soon as I find one, the Space Marines are going in. This will definitely trigger alien retaliation. They'll blow up a station, but that's okay. It'll cause them to vent a little bit of hate. Um, we're staying below 90 in terms of MC cap. That's my like rule of thumb level. Um, because MC cap in use is like the bottom level of hate. Your hate never burns down below the level equal to your mission control being used. Um, there's a multiplier, I believe, depending on your difficulty level, but basically, and, and no one's really worked it out. But from my experimentation so far, I wouldn't want to go any higher than like 80 to 90 in use. They don't care how much you have available, they care how much you have in use. Um, this gives me enough, like, uh, gap between the point where they start shooting and where they rest that I can push them above, they can retaliate, they cool off, and then I can get away with a few things here and then. We're working towards a tech which actually in, uh, reduces the impact of MC on alien anger. But to do that, I believe we need to go through Hydra interrogation and then another tech first. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. That's the plan. We're going to make the UK really angry at the government, and then we're going to throw the servants out and make the UK ours. That'll give us three new armies. I'm going to stick navies on those armies. Uh, if I put good military stations in orbit and get a good command counselor for advisement, if at some point we need to deploy armies, we'll have the six American armies. I hope to soon, at some point, I'm going to get a seven or even eight American navy uh, army navy combos. We can throw an extra navy on, say, an extra Indian army. Uh, and drop a really significant military force on any potential, you know, any sort of threat that requires a whole bunch of armies dropped on it. I don't know what I could possibly be talking about. But anyway, that's the plan. All right, we have found a resistance counselor to talk to. So that is exactly what we will do, which means... I'm here. Where are my space marines? All right, space marines. Assault hab. Go, 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 go. Awesome. Um, let me assign missions in the rest, and then we're going to launch the Marines. All right, let's land some Marines. People have quite rightly pointed out these are probably not Adeptus Astartes. These are not Space Marines. Um, but they will do the job. There we are. We've taken the base. Let's see how much damage we did. Okay, it looks like our marines destroyed one of the power generators and the mining complex as a nice little favor to the resistance. 
We're going to build a fission reactor array and drop a settlement mining complex for them before we hand it over, just so the AI doesn't get confused. Here we are, okay. Commander Fiona Aoade. Now, they won't sign a non-aggression pact for me, uh, because we're a little bit... Things are a little bit tense at the moment, but because there are still modules intact, they should be willing to buy this base. Do you have anything that I'm interested in? I'm interested in particularly cool, actually, I might also sell you because I want to accelerate your development a little bit, and I know you're uh, behind on water. Let's sell you 350 water and 50, 20 boost, just to give you a little bit of a leg up. We won't exactly take like enough payment to justify this. I'm just take, getting them to take this off my hands because I don't want it. Um, and we'll see if I can get anything cool from them in return. I'm specifically looking for uh, really cool level 3s. Space Tech is very cool, but I'd rather they have the boost than me. I'm sort of covered on boost, they're not. Um, because space tech is one of the things that's holding their space economy up, considering they're in negative resources, although this should fix some of their negative resources. That's kind of cool. That's very cool. That'll replace some of our stuff. Because we have some negative money um, admin orgs, we can replace that with a positive uh, money admin org. Xenon Laboratories is cool. Yeah, there are some cool, there are some cool ones here. Pelops work. Okay. That's also an option. So this is the uh, care package I've ultimately decided on. I've gone to generous trade because it improves their opinion overall, just in case I've annoyed them with anything. Um, it will trend back to, I think, in conflict because we're just too far ahead. But 500 water should help give them a little bit of a buffer before the mine finishes so they can restart their space expansion. 45 boost should be enough to cover their deficit again until the mine completes. This will hopefully restart resistance expansion in space without giving them a chance to really catch up with us. Like, not really. Um, we didn't give them any metal because they have plenty of metal. They didn't value it. They'll give us hexahedron processing and production and like us more for it, so we will complete that trade. Uh, it's telling me to reduce my unassigned org pool. All that means is I need to go to one of my counselors and reassign those admin orgs. With a marine transport, once you have seized a base, you just hit repair, and in 12 days it will restock with new marines from a station. Remembering Space Marines is still actually docked. It didn't have to undock in order to deploy its drop pods. It just has to be in an interface orbit. So that's great. The, uh, the Space Marines will restock their marine module. Um, at that point, we can probably go after other servant facilities, or we can set a burn towards Luna or even Earth orbit to start cleaning things up there. I don't see a reason to seize the bases from the Initiative, the Academy, or Exodus at this point. I'm going to go after Protectorate and Servant infrastructure. And yes, I'm about to take the UK, which means, yes, I'm going to get alien retaliation, but I don't much mind at this point. Uh, I'm willing to accept some retaliation in order to kick the servants in the teeth. Because if I look at resources now, maha, we have kicked the servants into negative water income, which means in um, the terms of their expansion, they're now going to be limited. If they build with things with water cost, that's going to exhaust them. In particular, if they try and build a warship, you saw warships cost maybe 100 water for propellant just to fill the tanks with um, hydrogen or whatever it is that they're using as fuel, unless they use Volados, either way, they'll burn through this pretty quickly, and then once they hit zero, their boost is going to have to start being diverted to lifting that boost into orbit. doesn't matter how much metal they have, unless they have diplomatic trading partners who are willing to sell them water, they're probably going to be stuffed, and their best trading partner, the Protectorate, is already water locked, and thus burning down their boost. If we can get these both locked out of space, then all we really have to worry about in orbit are the aliens, and that's kind of how I prefer it. Well, here's a sign the aliens don't want to be surprised again. Um, it looks like they brought a destroyer, an Island Dawn-class destroyer, uh, which is a transport with marine modules, coupled with a bunch of dreadnoughts and all sorts of other goodies. Let's have a look at the dreadnought. So here we are, the Rectified Rogue. Uh, this thing's got a spinal mount magnetic accelerator cannon. So that thing's going to have reach and lethality. It's got 
a whole bunch of missile bays, one, two, three, four missile bays, a particle beam, a laser battery, and a torpedo bay, and then a point defense particle beam. And I'm pretty sure these lasers can go into defense mode in order to provide point defense as well, so they're not messing around anymore. Uh, this thing's got a four-time fusion lantern mount, a fusion reactor. The armor isn't huge in terms of rating, but it is alien diamondoid armor, so this thing's, this thing's pretty dangerous. Um, it had a wet mass of 13,000 tonnes. It's got 7,000 tonnes current weight, which means it's burned... Yeah, it has. It's burned 398 of its 498 Delta V getting to Earth. But you know what? With our ships, that's still really, really impressive. 100 Delta V is enough to lap our vessel several times over. This is an alien battle fleet. It's them saying that they mean business, and how dare we shoot down some of their stuff. It may or may not launch some retaliation missions against us. Um, things will be what things will be, but I'm not going to mess with this sort of fleet. I do not have the technology or the makeup. The ships that I have designed are intended to down individual surveillance destroyers or transports or things like that to get alien technology and to occasionally maybe prevent an alien mission. We're not going near this. This is... um. Yeah, that, that's scary. That fleet is suicide to take on at this point in the game, so I'm not even going to try. What I am going to do is continue transitioning over to Tier 2 research modules. So I've got Xenoscience and Space Science. Uh, I might grab General Research Campus, although for the moment I just want to get up to speed on the specialized modules. That might be nice to research, though. Uh, Life Science Research Center is the next one to pick up, so what I'll do is I'll now go through and rationalize my orbital slots. Now, brief talk. If you think about it, every single one of these slots, these arms on a station, costs a fraction of an MC point, right? So every single one of these costs a fraction of that 3 MC the overall station costs. So you want to be as efficient as possible with your slots, because when you think about it, each one costs mission control, and mission control is the number that you kind of need to keep below a certain level, otherwise you're in a death spiral because the aliens go after you. So I can't just spam infinite stations in orbit. What I can do is replace a whole bunch of my Xenology labs, which give 10% research bonus and plus one to alien detection up to a maximum of nine. I have nine of those labs. If I replace them with four upgraded ones, they now cost less mission control, give the same, give a better research bonus, and give the same detection bonus. So if I go to this station and replace uh, these Xenology labs, with Xenoscience Research Centers. This will uh, take the station over power, unfortunately. So there we go. One, two, three. We're going to need to replace a material lab here with a solar ray, but we're moving towards um, a typical format. Anyway, let me just check power module. One, two, three. We need five in total. And then what I'll do is I'll go to another station that has Xenology now, and I will replace it. Um, when am I getting level 2 material labs? That's something I want too, because material labs are really cool. They're giving bonus material science, which I do a lot of, and they're giving a bonus to the mill priority. Anyway, I'm going to go to my stations. I'm going to go to five total xenology labs, and then any uh, xenology labs over that number get converted into what other tier 2 research I have available. I've already started putting up uh, social science research, so I'll get the maximum bonus from that. I want to do the same for the others as I finish them. I think I'm researching the level 2 life science one now. Great. Um, when am I getting the... There's the material. I'll do that before I do anything else. So I'll get the material research center. Just want to get the maximum research bonus and interface bonuses, fit as much of that into orbit as I can within the limit on MC that I'm working to, which is keeping this number below 90. I think it'll creep over once my next frigates finish. I'm building a couple of frigates, just uh, escort type frigates as a reserve, but I'm working on the tech that will allow us to increase, uh, to decrease the hate that we get from mission control. Anyway, I'm just going to do some orbital upgrades to, to adjust that. But my goal is have five level two research labs of every category in an interface orbit. If I do that, I'm going to maximize the investment bonuses I get for things on Earth without having to build additional stations. Leave it with me. Well, may we say God save the king. For the United Kingdom has been free, and we are still within our control point limit. 
time to get this country fixed up, although it's not in a terrible shape already. Uh, it's probably too cohesive. Hopefully that'll trend towards, yeah, it'll trend towards down. So what we really need to do with the UK, to be honest, is get the Navy built up to the point where these armies are actually mobile. Um, I'm not sure I'll actually give it military funding. I might. Um, but the UK is in a good place. Uh, it could potentially... We don't, need, we don't need any more nuclear weapons. The UK doesn't need any of that. Uh, we might finish a point of mission control. Uh, we don't need... Definitely do not need boost. We don't need spoils. We don't need funding. We will take the executive spot, which will clean this up. Uh, I won't do any unity spending. Knowledge is okay. A little bit of welfare just to keep things on an even keel. But I think mostly I want... I want Navy spending for the moment to get some of these armies mobile, finish off that MC point and otherwise run a balanced profile. Um, that should be all I need for the moment. Um, I'll get the UK back under control pretty shortly. We'll take the executive. We'll get these armies mobile because they'll be more useful that way. Yeah, life should be good. Life should be very good. Um, and we're working, we're about to crest 4.0 uh, 4 on the democracy meter. Um, every, okay, so every year we're increasing 0.3. We're going to need, we're going to need to pick up the pace. We're at 51% knowledge with a 51% bonus. We're going to need to crank that bonus higher. I can do it once I get my orbital station sorted out. Um, but yeah, it's taken, it's taking a while. Well, at least we're getting inequality down faster. Once this is low, I can take some away from welfare. Um, we don't need that mission control investment for the moment. We can grab it elsewhere, like from places like Slovakia, maybe from the UK. Once I've got the UK just that little more stable, in particular once I've got this navy built, um, I might go to do mission control in the UK. Because any ground-based mission control saves me having to use a station for it, and if I don't have to use a station for it, I don't have to spend the MC on the station itself. Hopefully that makes sense. So there we are. The UK is taken with CP to spare. Thank you very much, uh, corridor diplomacy and transnational coordination for giving me the CP points. I think we've still, now that we've got that, we'll grab the executive, see how many points we have left, and then see what we can do next. But geez, that's about to piss the servants off, so um, yeah, stay tuned. But good one, Max. Good one. And the UK is happy about it. It's peaceful. Love it. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll fix all this. Don't, don't, don't you worry. We'll fix it all. All right, some wallabies have launched, which is useful in a way because I didn't want to waste my shipyard capacity. I'm about to replace my shipyards that are sitting at a T2 station in Earth orbit with some research facilities as soon as I finish them, as I continue my program of uh, stacking T2 science in orbit. This 96 is too high in my view, but we've almost finished Hydra interrogation, which will solve the problem. We've also, meanwhile, uh, we'll be ready for looks like we're about to face a crackdown. Uh, so we might have to do some counterattacks in the UK. I should put defend interest there, but we should be able to fend off the uh, the servants there. But that's what we're doing. We've consolidated all of the UK. We've got a better space presence, so I'll consolidate my options there. The Space Marines, meanwhile, do we have anything more that we need to do on Mars? I'm not sure we do. There's a servant station here, Delos Station. Uh, it's useless. It has no modules, and it's bleeding them support costs. So I'm going to let them have Delos for the moment. Um, instead, I'm going to redirect the Space Marines. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the HAB menu. Let's look at what the servants own. What do they got? They've got the ISS and Halong Bay in terms of their stations. All right, fair enough. We might take these away from them, but again, they're eating up upkeep. Uh, and what do they got in terms of ground bases? They know, oh, this is on Earth, all locations. So they got a lunar base, and they've got an asteroid base. So we could build a marine transport with like an ion drive to get out there. I'm not sure what the transfer requirements to get out that far would be. Um, and in terms of remaining site, or remaining like locations, we could see stuff from orbit, but again, I like that they've got these stations that are chewing up upkeep. Clearly what happens is, and this, I've noticed this can happen, if the AI is thinks it's got a certain number of resources, it starts expanding. If you then pull back, for whatever reason, the number of resources it has, it completes those buildings and you can lock it. Um, what the AI 
needs to do is then trade for those resources, but the servants have no friends to buy those resources from, and if everyone who they like is also short on them, namely the protectorate is also short on them, there's very little way for them to even it out. They can maybe buy from the academy, maybe the initiative, um, but what do we want to take from them? Do we want to take their lunar base from them? I reckon, you know what? I reckon I want this asteroid base. I'm not sure if I want their... I'm not sure if I want their Mars base. Because it's sucking up a lot of upkeep costs and generating them just base metals, which is not really a problem for them anyway. How much to get out to Rushmore base? 21 Lucia. Uh, I don't think we're going to have anywhere near the Delta V, but I just want to know. Um... Where is 21 Lucia? Uh, is it Asteroid Belt? It's not around Ceres. It's not around Vesta. 21 Lucia. Delta V too low. Requires 22.5 KPS. So I'd have to re-engineer a new type of marine vessel in order to do that. What I'm going to do with the Space Marines in the meantime... Um, can I do a transfer to... One of my bases in LEO. I can. It's going to take some time though. It's going to take like six months. I can build another one of these um, in orbit of Mars if I need one. I'm kind of tempted to send the Space Marines back to planet Earth. Um, yeah. Let's, let's set them on a burn back to planet Earth so we can take the Servant and Protectorate stations if need be. I don't see any interesting um, protectorate locations there, but maybe we purge any locations around Earth that are of interest to us. Awesome. Okay, so the Space Marines are now burning back to Earth. We can now do the point defense array, but I'm not going to, and light IR lasers, but I'm actually working on particle cannons. There we are. There's the crackdown in the UK. I will deal with that, but we're about to finish Hydra interrogation. Here we are. Hydra language, tonal language, olfactory emissions, incredible time, patience to divine useful meaning, every failure is an opportunity to learn, each unfortunate dead end, greater insight. All right. We have completed interrogate the Hydra captive. The subject was initially uncooperative. Under persuasion, it revealed the following. And to protect your own sensibilities, uh, Colonel Castillo admits what exact persuasion was applied. The Hydras came here to enslave the inhabitants of Earth and press them into service as battle thralls, i.e. slave soldiers. They have already enslaved at least two other species this way, which we have named Salamanders and Griffins. Uh, so we've seen both of these. The Salamanders are we saw as a bodyguard organization, and the Griffins we saw operating spaceships. The Hydras arrived in our solar system less than one year before first contact via a discontinuity in space-time, more commonly known as a wormhole. Our end of the wormhole is situated at the main alien base in the Kuiper Belt. At the other end is another solar system controlled by the Hydra. The wormhole requires an enormous amount of energy to create and maintain and can only admit a relatively small quantity of mass over a designated period. This places sharp limits on the quantity of personnel and technology that our invaders can bring with them. Due to point three, the Hydra invasion force is relatively small. The subject estimated that there are no more than 500 Hydras currently present in the solar system. Their slaves outnumber them many times over. That means the, the Salamanders and the Griffins. And their entire space fleet has been constructed here. The Hydra appear extremely unified in their viewpoint and outlook. The subject, along with all other Hydras in our system, identify as members of the Defense Consensus. They are fully committed to the enslavement of all other species, and there are no dissident Hydra factions. There is, of course, always the possibility that the subject is lying, but all evidence suggests that peaceful relations are impossible. Ultimately, there are only two likely outcomes. They enslave us, or we kill them. We will continue the interrogation once the subject regains consciousness. So there you go. Now the penny drops. You understand why they haven't just destroyed us, why they haven't just wiped us out of existence, but also why their fleet is so limited and their industrial capacity is relatively minor, why they use material from our solar system. They're here because they want to enslave us as they have enslaved other species before. They're weak, which is why they haven't destroyed us all with like an asteroid drop onto our planet when they first arrived. They're weak because they can only transport very small amounts of individuals or technology through the wormhole, which means everything else they have to build here, and they have to do it with very limited manpower. They have the technological advantage, sure, but they're trying to make do in our solar system with much more advanced technology, 
but much less scale. And that's what gives us hope for a potential victory, at least if you're humanity first. We have seven plus billion brains working on solving uh, technical, engineering, scientific problems. We've got a lot of industrial heft behind us. When we want to build new stations, we can crew those stations easily. They have to work a little bit harder. But at the same time, we've discovered that they want to enslave us. And that kind of means that maybe our approach of wiping them out is entirely reasonable. I mean, of course, we're humanity first. Of course, we are right. There was never any doubt. Suffer not the alien to live. I'll pick a new tech and we'll continue. And here's the tech that I wanted. We are now able to undertake strategic deception. We estimate we can increase our HAB and fleet construction by 25% as measured by mission control usage without inviting alien retaliation. Now, I think the sweet spot is somewhere between 80 and 90 to be reasonably safe. So this might add as much as 16 to 20 additional MC that we can safely use. So you can bet that strategic deception just became my absolute most important top grade technology because it allows us to expand our presence in space. Everything else goes down to one star. We rush this tech because it's going to allow me to burn off more hate and also have more presence in space without inviting constant retaliation missions. Uh, the other thing we're going to have to do is I've sent a sabotage mission against the servants because I've been checking out what tech they're researching and there's this one here they're researching now, the Alien Nation. This allows the servants to hand some of their territory over directly to be administered by the Hydra. I don't want that, so I'm going to delay that every single month I can, but at the same time it means that we need to get ready for a fight. Um, every potential servant nation is a potential landfall location for the Alien Nation, uh, which means the US military is about to get a little bit of combat experience and exercise. We've been building the technology level constantly. We're now at 5.1, which means the US military is now robotic age. They've rolled out the railgun or the magnetic accelerator tanks um, and the jet VTOLs. Like, they're rolling out some sweet stuff. We're building military science labs in orbit. That'll give us a bonus of 0.3. So the US military is going to go to war as a tech level 5.4 to 5.5 force. That's pretty good. But what we're going to have to do is actually increase its scale. So what that means is for the moment, yes, the US is enjoying being a tech level 11.1 .1 nation that produces a crap ton of research. It's like 1100 when the um, when the advise fires, because it'll get like plus, 100, plus 200 or so once he triggers. We're going to have to divert some funding away from knowledge. And we have to divert some funding away from the economy. So 23%, and then we're going to have to increase the priority on build army to about 26%. We're going to want to finish an additional army, and then we're going to want to build another navy. For the United Kingdom, we want to finish a navy. Uh, I'm not even sure that mission control point. Uh, I want to finish a little more mission control, and then once that's done, I want to build this navy. So we want two to three UK armies mobile. The um, India is soon going to have to switch... Um, as soon as that clicks over 8, I'm going to turn off knowledge mode and re-engage the economy, but also I'm going to finish this Indian Navy, so two Indian armies are available for deployment. My aim is to have maybe 11 armies, including seven very hard-hitting American ones, ready for deployment if the servants are able to found the alien nation, but for the moment we're just going to try and delay them a bit. So yeah, um, I like some time. We've taken away some of their research output by taking the UK away. So let's just blow that one up um, and let's see what their output is and how quickly, because I'm sure they're rushing it. I'm sure they're rushing it. Um, we want resources. 649 science. I'm not sure what their bonuses are, but if they're rushing it, they can probably. we probably need to blow up their research every couple of months, which will piss them off. But you know what? Um, I want to slow that down as much as possible. These guys aren't doing anything too scary. Is anyone doing anything scary? The Resistance is finally researching ferrocytes. Good on you. I'm not seeing anything scary from anyone else. All right, I'm happy with that. We have no clue what the Academy is researching, of course. Um, there we are. Prepare the alien nation and learn their purpose, whereas the Protectorate is at conduct diplomacy with the aliens. This prepare the alien nation thing, like, I, I, I don't want that. That's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. 
Might even take their xenology labs away from them in orbit to slow down their research bonus later on, once the space marines arrive, we'll see. And the aliens are bombarding again, that's to be expected. We did just piss off the servants, so let's just see what is destroyed. There we are, settlement mining complex destroyed. Looks like we've got some other destroyed modules as well. Um, these were research stations of some sort, I believe. One, two, three, we've still got our fission modules, so what we need is to rebuild. But, you know, just let, let the aliens vent. We're going to get the hate cap down shortly. Um, I think some of these were skunk works. And then I think we had our space science research going on on planet Earth. Um, so let's just rebuild some of these skunk works. We'll need another fission reactor array to power the whole thing. That one's in construction. That looks like a construction module that was destroyed. Uh, we need that construction module. I want something can research uh, build tech one and two, so we'll build the nano factory there. And let's just check power requirements. Again, I'm surprised we need more arrays, but that makes sense. And then we've got one slot open. I'm not sure what that was. I'm just going to make it a skunk works. Because uh, soon we will have more research slots anyway. All right, aliens, get it out of your system. I know I'm pissing you off. I'm delaying the installation of your nation. There we are. Settlement cons uh, destroyed here. Oh, okay. They really damaged this base. They, they, wow. Yeah, they're, they're, um, they're angry. All right, well, I'll just rebuild as they fire at me. As long as I don't go much higher on the MC, I should be okay. And we're going to finish Strategic Deception soon, which will help. Okay, so they've blown up MB1 entirely. MB1 was destroyed by the aliens. Ah, great. Okay, well, let's found that. Found it again. I'll rename it later off screen. Uh, let's rebuild this facility. It's going to take a while because they have destroyed so much of our construction capacity. It's going to take a while to refound. It will cost us. It is okay. Um, and this, this was a bunch of skunks. Um, I will build probably just a tier one construction module on this one. Yeah, I'm just going to do a tier one construction module there, just because it's quick to get up, and I think the power requirements are going to be tight. Is this going to put me over? Yes, it will. So we're going to need fission reactor away. Or we can get something that is lower cost than that, but to be honest, I'm not sure. I might be able to put some... I'll, I'll play around with this one. I just want to wait for a few more lab types to research. The key for right now is to get it back into construction, so... Yeah, the aliens are venting their hatred and anger. It is to be expected. There's the Information Science Research Lab. Fantastic. Can research purpose and ferrocyte resistance, all of which are good. Um, I'm not sure I want to rush that, though. There's a whole bunch of other things that I could pick up. Um, leave it with me. All right, so India has um, finally hit advanced. This is a good goal for the moment. It does need a bit of a kick in GDP in order to keep people happy though, and we can generate a few more IP. So I'm gonna go build a Navy. I'm back to 40% economy for a while. This will probably uh, increase the control cap cost of India because we're gonna generate another control point, uh, which will bump us up about 20 points, but we can afford that at the moment. We're gonna take a point back in the UK. Um, and we'll just be able to afford things. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Maybe I don't do that just yet. Maybe I stay on knowledge like that. Something like this, a little bit of a kick for the economy, a little bit of knowledge, and then get that Navy finished. Because if the India, if India does go to another CP, I'm not going to be in a position to immediately consolidate uh, this Russian point for belonging to the resistance, which I kind of want to do. Um, I have compromised a protectorate operative, so I now have full view over both the protectorate and the servants. Um, once Max is finished reclaiming our point in the UK, I'm actually considering sending Max on a little bit of a, uh, a human resource adjustment campaign to streamline labor employment figures in the protectorate council roster. You know, just to slow them down a little bit. 
In particular, if we can knock off some high administration councillors, we might be able to throw them over their cap, and that's always funny. Um, I'd also like to remove anyone who's got the stats necessary to mess with me. But, you know, leave it with me. Uh, we're making a lot of progress. I kind of want to run the episode until I finish strate Strategic Deception and do a little more expansion. But for the moment, a lot of construction going on in Earth Orbit to try and push these research bonuses higher. These are rookie numbers. We can do a lot better. And the stations are all researching now. I'm also getting the farm. The farm will be able will give us a reasonable increase in water and volatile income if we add them to some of our stations. They're sometimes worth it, sometimes not, but they're cheap and I'm happy to have them. We do have five life science labs being constructed, so we'll get a plus 50% bonus soon, but I just thought I'd smack this one out, even though it's not quite so optimized. Strategic deception, alien technology, should be pretty self-explanatory. Particle cannon, supercapacitor, high temperature superconductor. After we've finished strategic deception, I want to knock out some more global techs because we desperately need them. And we're clearly the tech leader at this point, so where we put our tech matters. Oh, also, here's an interesting trivia point. Um, people sometimes complain that other actions complete before them. Every action has a set base time it takes to complete. Generally, defensive actions are much faster than offensive actions. But within the same offensive action, the higher skill level goes first. So Max here is trying to purge the mass media in the UK. So are these servant operatives over here. But he is a higher skill than them, and he's going to resolve a day early. So they're probably going to be disappointed when, when their chance of success goes down if he successfully completes first. Okay, so he is now purged, which means their dro chance drops to 2 and 0 respectively because they're now targeting a pre-purged point. There you are. And that's how you uh, block people by using high skill counselors, and that's how the resolution order on actions works. Oh, my labs are finishing. Awesome. So here's an example of a high value target for human resource reconsideration. Ross Ivy has 18 administration and 22 persuasion. I imagine some of that is coming from uh, his organization. So let's just look at his base. Uh, six, so he's actually at admin 12. Looks like a lot of his persuasion may be from his orgs, so stealing his orgs may be more effective. So he's a 12 administration, and then he's 22, he's 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So he's a 9, 12. So he's, he's respectable, he's not as overpowered as I thought he was. Let's see if we've got anyone else who might be particularly scary. She's a 20, she's a 16. She's a 13. Yeah, okay, she's crap. Looks like the, the one that we turned actually might be better. Basically, what I'm looking at is someone who contributes pretty heavily to their um, admin cap. So let's go back to looking at Ross here. We can't take the re-education team. That's their unique organization. That's giving them six admin, five persuasion, 15 influence, three security. Like, that's their unique one. I can't take that off him. Are any of these particularly cool? I feel like he had... He's got a lot of persuasion organizations. So the question is, do I want to terminate Ross? I'm kind of tempted to. Um, he's got espionage. He's got command. I don't think his replacement is going to be as useful as he is. So let's reevaluate his employment status uh, with the Protectorate. Um, they'll probably be pissed at us. It'll only generate a very little hate with the aliens. The aliens don't mind as much when you beat up on the Protectorate as opposed to when you beat up on the servants. So I'm going to beat up on the Protectorate a little bit. Um, they are earthbound, but that doesn't mean they're not a threat. But once I remove him, I do have to decide what I can do with the servants. Once I finish Strategic Deception, I'm in a better position because I'm going to have more hate buffer. I can expand in space a little bit while still having a buffer between um, that hate can drop down to and that I can do some things without causing retaliation missions. Um, worst case scenario though, I cause retaliation missions, I let them destroy some stuff, I rebuild, I keep doing it, but I need to start slowing down the servants. Taking the UK was big. Taking the UK so, uh, slowed them down a lot. But if we look at their uh, tech, 
they're researching alienation again. They're at 1,000 out of 2,500 in like maybe two mission phases. Once this number gets to about 1750, I'm going to blow up their research again and just keep them nice and slow, basically. So that's my plan. Uh, I'll try and race through because I would like to get to strategic deception before the end of the episode, but we will see. And with the human resource situation adjusted, the Protectorate are now over their control point cap. They will hire a new counselor and staff them up with orgs, but for the moment they're over cap and we should look for anywhere in the world that they decide to decrease their influence. Um, I've just been bribing the resistance to get a little bit of goodwill though, because I'm seriously considering taking this oligarch point, uh, sorry, the security apparatus point. It's been here for a while and our project in the Eurasian Union would be going much better if we could divert these resources um, to the benefit of modernizing the state. Slovakia, meanwhile, is up to five mission control. Once it's at eight, we'll unify it into the wider whole. Um, also a consideration around the future of the Czechs, but the resistance is doing a pretty good job of building that nation up in its mission control, and maybe even its army um, by themselves. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. A Czech army would be interesting to absorb into the Eurasian Union. Uh, once I clear one of these categories, I might actually spend some time doing uh, map painting research, because people love map painting, and even though I'm focused on space, I'm aware that people want to see me do stuff on Earth as well. So I might do like Great Nations research or something. And there we go, I now feel much safer. So 25% reduction in our MC. So you were saying, I would thought before 80, 90% was a good limit. With this, I feel like we can push a little bit further. So I might be able to go up into like 100, 110 maybe. This is just, this is really anecdotally based, right? This is based on what I have observed from other people's runs seems to trigger attacks. And it seems like once you push if you push up to like 130 or 140 on a normal difficulty playthrough normally, even if you don't do anything to the aliens, like shoot anything down, they're locked in a, in a hate spiral. And that's because the, the very act of having used MC itself is provocative. So if you keep trying to outbuild them, you lose. But if you're not that provocative, every time you provoke them and they attack you, say you attack the servants or something, they attack you and that burns them down below the point where they hate you too much. This gives me a little more buffer in terms of how much economic activity I can do in space without causing a problem. So I'm very happy to have done that. Um, I can pick up some more stuff here now. I'm not really in a race for a lot of stuff. I might go add some farms to some... We'll talk about farms and then I'll close out the episode. I'll pick up... I'm going to pick up probably fleet combatants. It's long overdue. Um but I'm going to deprioritize it down to August and I'm going to finish super capacitors. Security measures and alien technology are both in research and coming along well. Our um, other stuff should finish too soon. The servants inspired their person, so I lost contact. So I'll have to re-compromise a servant, which is a real problem because at the moment, I don't. I need to get eyes on really soon or I'm going to miss their um, the window to bomb the alien nation before they finish it. So I will find a servant, I will uh, locate them, compromise them, and bomb their, bomb their research projects. But that's great. So I've sent a few bases out to uh, asteroids just to expand mining slightly, just a couple of high value asteroids. Uh, I'm not going to try and defend them if a war breaks out. I'm just going to get what yield I can from them. They're basic tech level one bases. Um, like a level one core and a level one mine, it's two MC, it's good yield on some of those places. If it gets blown up, it gets blown up. Um, worth more than having more ships, I think. I might now have cap to be able to produce a colony ship, so it'd be great for me to show colony ships in use, which means I might eventually want to unlock a uh, mission to Saturn or mission to Jupiter if we want to go set up a base in those locations. Yes, the aliens are in both places already, but if we don't provoke them too much, we can probably set up nearby, which is a good idea. But I want most of my development to continue to be focused in the inner system. Uh, that means continuing to focus on places like Mars and Mercury. Uh, there are more mines that we could establish there and in the asteroid belt. We could also upgrade a lot of facilities and not tier two. 
like a lot of our bases are only tier one bases. They're like this. Uh, this is because it is cheaper in terms of mission control. This is a two mission control base. A tech two base is five mission control, but only gives like 50% more yield on the mine. So you're really paying for the extra modules, not extra mining output. So if you're just after stockpiling resources, which is what I'm trying to do, more mining bases and reserving more territory from your enemy is better. Let's close out by having a look at what a farm does. Um, so you can see my bases in orbit are starting to finish their Tech 2 research modules. So we're getting material science and all this sort of stuff done. Xeno science is here, which is giving bonus to our scans. Uh, that'll be military science, I think. Yep, great. So if we look at, uh, let's look at Earth locations, humanity first. If I find, here's a good example where I left a spot open. So this is a tier two base. Um, it's going to have a lot of crew once it finishes up. So two, 20 crew, five crew in those modules. Um, what it does, so let's just see, why do those show such low crew numbers? Anyway, uh, maybe I just, to illustrate, let me pick a base with a full crew complement. Here we are, this, well, a partial crew complement. This has got 125 crew now, it's gonna have about 250 when it's done. A farm removes the water cost and the volatile cost for up to 250 crew, which is usually enough for most of a T2 station. So this is basically like adding, in exchange for giving it one slot and 40 power, you're basically increasing your water and volatile mining. Potentially that can be worthwhile depending on how many locations you have left to develop. I quite like stockpiling huge amounts of volatiles because there's some really terrible events in the game that have to do with energy crises um, and that requires volatiles. Also, there are engines that eat volatiles. There's a lot of reasons to have a stockpile, so I might go around adding some farms. I can do more space development now. I can upgrade more of my stations around Earth. I can consider expanding my fleet to involve um, more like colony ships. I can expand my presence in the asteroid belt and I can expand myself around Mercury in order to make it more of a, uh, to monopolize this area more. So for example, uh, picking up the Prokofiev uh, crater is probably worth it at some point just to stop anyone else feeling like they should come to Mercury. Um, asteroids are obviously worth it too. And I could even set up, if I do research um, a research campus. So if I divert from this momentarily and pick up research campus instead, I think that's a good choice. This is the general purpose um, research location. It doesn't produce a bonus to any particular activity or area in terms of percentage. It's just 50 base science. So if I stack maybe two stations with um, uh, 10 of those modules each, I don't think I could do 10 modules each, but if I did, that's an extra 1000 science per month. That would be a 20% to 25% increase in our monthly science output, which could be worth it as well, and a good potential use of 6MC. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for this episode. We've done strategic deception. We deployed the Space Marines for the first time, and we've sent them back to Earth to cause more trouble. We're hiding from the alien fleets that are now running security duty in orbit, but we've now activated strategic deception, so we've got a little bit more of a buffer on what we can pull off. The UK is now solidly under control and will soon have a navy for its second army, probably even go for a navy for its third army. Its economy will manage. And then the UK is probably doing mission control, actually, just like um, Slovakia is, and eventually just like the Czech Republic will do. I am seriously considering getting some map painting technology so that we can expand India, expand the Eurasian Union, um, just keep grinding out our opponents. But I am finally going to keep a good eye on the servants because the more I can delay, you see, I'm finally starting to get my armies ready now. The more I can delay the alien nation's formation, the better. But when it does form, when the servants do decide to openly declare that they're not just traitors, they're active patsies for the aliens, well, we've got some robotic age militaries that are available and ready for duty. Um, awesome. And if I get my Miltech stations in orbit, which I am working on, uh, these will get a nice plus 0.3 bonus, which will make them a 5.4. If I advise them with max, they get another 0.25. I reckon a military of 5.6 is entirely possible. And remember, those mega, those mega flora that we saw, those mega fauna, they were combat strength 6. So we're close to getting a US each US military unit to like xenofauna levels of power. 
That's what happens, Americans, when you don't have universal health care, but instead military investment. Take care. See you again soon.